Hi everyone. In the last class, I had given this uh, four circuits shown here and asked you to find the equivalent resistance. So this is es essentially uh, a resistive network consisting of ideal independent voltage sources. Okay. So before we, we solve this problem, let me just briefly uh, take you through independent voltage sources and resistances for them. So let's say we have a voltage source of one volt. Now you are supposed to find the impedance, the equivalent resistance of a one volt voltage source. Now there are two ways in which you can estimate the resistances of uh, either uh, in any any circuit element. One is that let's say you have a circuit element um, with two terminals and you are interested in finding the equivalent resistance between the two terminals. There are two ways. One way you can apply a voltage source of value which we have discussed so far Vt and measure the current Id flowing through this. The other way is to actually apply instead of a voltage source you can just apply a current source uh, you can apply a current of value it and measure the voltage developed across it now both these results should give you the same both these methods should actually give you the same results uh, when you actually try and measure the uh, equivalent resistance so using that in this circuit for example, in the circuit shown here, we will try to find the equivalent circuit for the equivalent resistance for this. So, since this circuit is comprising only of voltage source, I can't force a voltage source and measure the resistance. Instead, I will try forcing a current IT and measure the voltage across this. Now, you know the voltage across this is 1 volt and for example, let's say I am forcing a 1 ampere current, then the voltage developed across this is 1 volt. So, the resistance is 1 volt by 1 ampere, which is 1 ohm. But the question is, is this correct? I mean, does this have 1 ampere of resistance? Um, the answer is no. Uh, the reason being that the, it's a voltage source. So therefore, it will always give you a constant 1 volt output. So what is the definition of a resistance? That as you increase the voltage, your current should also increase. Okay. In a, with a certain with a fixed slope. And similarly, when you decrease your voltage, your current should also decrease. Or in this case, if I am applying current as an input, the excitation is input and we are measuring the voltage as an output. If you increase the current, voltage should also increase because you know, uh, I is simply, uh, V is simply I times R. So if you increase current, your voltage will also increase. But in this circuit, even if you increase the current, your voltage is always fixed at 1 volt and we have already plotted the IV characteristics of an ideal voltage source. So the, it's a 1 volt voltage source, no matter what the current is. So this is voltage and current no matter what the current is it's always one volt so therefore if i ask you to find the slope of this line you know the slope is infinity because it's just the y-axis since the slope is infinity for an iv graph the slope is simply one by the resistance if this is infinity then the resistance is zero okay so you can you can you can actually see here from this graph if i apply i just want to measure the change in voltage for a changing current okay even though the change in current is finite, the change in voltage is zero in this problem because it's always fixed at one volt. So therefore, this is zero, and that's your R equivalent. Okay, and similarly, if I take an ideal current source of value, say one ampere or one ampere, or or, or some I amperes or one ampere in this case, and I apply a voltage source of V T, and I'll try to measure the current. Now we know the current is always going to be constant no matter what the voltage is okay so even if i change this voltage the current is remain going to remain fixed so therefore we can say that the resistance uh, equivalent resistance is infinity okay so you can see from this the slope of this line is zero which is one by r is zero so your r should be infinity so even if you change your voltage even if there is a delta v change there is no change in the current the change in delta is zero therefore this will tend to infinity so for an ideal current source the resistance is infinity so i'll use a word called incremental resistance okay uh, it's 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 defined as the changing for changing voltages what is the change in the current not rather than, rather than an absolute volt you apply an absolute voltage and measure the absolute current you actually measure uh, you apply a changing voltage and then measure the changing current in it that will give you an incremental resistance so that's delta v upon delta i is what we define as incremental resistance Okay, so now that having known and having understood this basic concept, we'll just go back to analyzing the circuit shown here. So here, 
I have actually uh, put a voltage source in parallel with an R four R network. Okay. Now we know the resistance equivalent resistance of this part is simply R because the upper two resistors are in parallel. It's R by two in series with R by two. You are going to have a resistance of R that would appear in parallel with one volt. Again, in this circuit, I'll choose to apply current and then measure the impedance. So when I apply a current, the voltage is always one volt. So I can simply say the equivalent resistance is zero, right? So it it the voltage source literally shunts out the resistance in this case. It's literally shunting out the resistor. So whatever be the current you apply here, the current through the res resistor is always fixed, which is actually one volt upon R. The current through this path is resist resistance arm is always fixed. It's one volt upon one volt upon R, and any extra any current you apply here will be entirely going into the one volt source, and the voltage will remain unchanged. Okay, so you should understand that the one one volt upon R that current actually comes from the voltage source. It's not actually coming from the current source you are applying. So as far as the current source is concerned, the test current source you are applying to measure the equivalent resistance, it will see a zero resistance. Even even though you change your current, the change delta V will be zero. So therefore, the equivalent resistance seen at this point is zero. Okay. Now, in a similar way, I can actually find equivalent resistance for this circuit. In this circuit, I'll apply a voltage. I mean, you can you can either apply a current and measure it, or even apply a voltage source. We can apply a voltage of value V V T and measure the resistance. Okay. So the current flowing through this is Vt minus one upon R. Okay. So as you keep, as I said first, this is the fixed uh, nominal voltage. So you should apply a changing voltage. Let's apply a delta voltage, extra voltage, and measure the excess current, which is delta I. Then you would get delta V upon R. So the resistance in this circuit is simply R itself. In this circuit, it is simply R. So said otherwise, uh, we must have already studied in basic electric circuits that. When you have a when you are measuring equivalent resistance, you should make independent voltage sources go to zero and independent current sources go to zero. So that is equivalent to shorting an independent voltage source. Okay, so I might as well instead of one volt, I might as well short this independent voltage source and find the equivalent resistance. I'd get the so I'd get the same answer. Okay, so when you are measuring equivalent resistance. The normal rule of thumb is you should make independent voltage sources go to zero and independent current sources go to zero. Okay, so you should short the voltage sources and open circuit the current sources. So in, in I'll just apply that problem uh, that principle here. So I'll just uh, I'll just short this voltage source and then open circuit this current source. The equivalent resistance in this problem is simply R because the upper resistance is shorted out. Okay, anything in parallel with a short is short itself. You know, there is, it's like putting a resistance in parallel with zero resistance is equal. To, it's always lower than the smallest resistance. Here it is zero, so therefore you get a zero resistance. In this problem, I have to open circuit the current source, so you'll be left with a resistance and an open node. Since uh, even if you apply any voltage source, the current flowing would be zero because you have I mean extra current, any excess current flowing would be zero. So therefore, the equivalent resistance is infinity in this problem. Okay, we'll go through a few uh, small examples to just understand this concept. I mean, to just go into detail. So, for example, if I have a resistance and a current source in parallel, and a resistance and a DC voltage source in series, and I have a final resistance here. Let me put the circuit like this. So, this is some Vx. R and R. By inspection, you you can quickly say that the moment I make this voltage source zero, these two nodes are short. Okay, I'm making this zero; these two are short. So none of this would matter. Whatever is in this region, whatever in this region would matter at all. The equivalent resistance is simply R. Okay. So similarly, if I have anything in series, if I put any any when you have any network where you have uh, you can have a network of resistors here. Let, let me see. You can simply have a huge network of resistors here. Okay, but the moment you put it in series with the current source, the equivalent resistance is simply going to be infinity because the as soon as your current source opens, it's not going to let the current change in the circuit. So it will simply open up 
and these two nodes will be open. So the, any change, excess change in the current would be zero, even if you apply a finite voltage. So your equivalent resistance will be infinity. So that's all about uh, resistors and independent voltage sources. So you know how, to, given any independent resistive network comprising of independent voltage sources, you should be very easily be able to solve and find the equivalent resistance. Okay. So independent voltage sources won't let the uh, you know if if you put it independent voltage sources should be simply shorted out and uh, current sources should be open when you are analyzing equivalent resistances ok. So, let me just uh, take a few more examples. Say this is V x and I x. So, the equivalent resistance of this is simply R ok. And you, you can if you put add any resistance in parallel of value r and r this again would be uh, r by 2 in parallel with r which would be r by 3. And now let us say we take a network like this. So, I have considered the uh, the balanced bridge or the bridge circuit which I have dis I mean discussed in the previous classes and I have added an extra 1 volt source here ok. Now, again when you are finding the equivalent resistance this 1 volt short source will not matter. So, you can simply short this 1 volt source and the equivalent resistance will simply be R ok. So, similarly if I add a current source here a DC current source between these two nodes of value fixed value i x even that is not going to affect your equivalent resistances ok. So, you, you have to uh, that I mean we have to just open it out and then find the equivalent resistance and in case I give you a problem like this say r now in this case if I ask you to find the equivalent resistance this equivalent resistance will be different than R. So, that for to find that you have to short out this resistance because your voltage source is uh, in parallel with it you have to short this point. So, it will be a simply a reduced problem uh, since these two nodes are shorted. So, your the circuit would reduce to something like this you would have this resistor will come in parallel with this and you have this resistor. This resistor is also uh, you will have a resistance R here which is this and this resistance R will be this. So, from this you can compute the overall equivalent resistance which would be R and R in parallel is R by 2 3 R by 2 in parallel with R ok. That would simply be three fifths of R ok that is it. So, I think this should be sufficient to un make you I mean uh, get your understanding about resistors and independent voltage sources. In the next class I will cover about resistors and dependent voltage sources ok. I will stop at this point thank you.